Hello everyone. Today we would like to give you an overview of um, a very present topic, the Google Consent Mode. And the question is, why is this topic so present very recently? And there's a reason for it, uh, because there just happened a deadline some time ago on March 6. And now the question is obviously, what is this deadline about? And that is something that we would like to discuss in today's webinar. So three fundamental points. One is the impact of consent on advertising. The second is the changes we see, especially in the regulatory environment, not just in Europe. And the last but not least one is how can you as a company uh, react to these points? And these topics uh, will be discussed today by um, by Audrey Hirsch. She is the global product strategy lead for user and regulatory uh, at Google. She's at Google for six years now and has been in the regulatory space for two and a half years. Um, while working in Chicago, Audrey enjoys traveling around uh, besides her work, uh, exploring the restaurants and mostly spending time with her nearly one year old baby. And Jalen Barker, who is Global Product Solutions Lead for Ads Privacy and Regulations at Google. He worked for Google uh, in the last four years, and he's in the regulatory space for around one year, usually working out of San Francisco, but also the um, LA offices. And he also enjoys being active and um, uh, doing outdoor activities. They are both dialing in from the United States, so very happy that you both are here with me today. I am Tilman Hamling, basically looking at privacy markets and its developments for the last 5.5, .5, so five and a half um, years. Let's quickly talk about user centrics. Obviously, who Google is, is uh, pretty, pretty clear, I would say, but I would like to very quickly show you some insights on the user centric side. So we started in 2012 and our company has since then experienced a significant um, global expansion, um, obviously due to the global regulations, the global regulations um, that we've seen there. Uh, we've established partnerships with uh, leading brands like Daimler, Porsche and others and are now integrated into, as you can see, more than 1.6 million websites, also applications and IoT solutions. And our primary focus, which is also our vision, is to build a world where privacy enables a thriving um, digital ecosystem. A big, big question would be, why? Why are we doing this? Um, because data protection in the end are requirements that we are seeing increasingly and increasingly uh, growing also on a global level. We experienced the evolution starting here in Europe, but also in the US, and we are aligned uh, with these evolving standards. What you can see here at the GDPR, something that we saw in 2018, and we saw the US with CCPA in 2020, and it went um, over and over and over and bigger and bigger developments. And it's not just in general a regional topic. So data privacy is not just happening on websites, as I mentioned previously, but also in mobile apps, games, IoT solutions. So wherever you can, um, how to say it, somehow aggregate um, data. And all of this uh, sounds potentially a little complex, but um, actually, there is kind of a um, uh, aligning to it. Uh, let's say a silver lining. The good thing is that most regulations, at least from a consent perspective, um, are pretty, pretty similar. I'm taking out uh, some US states regulations uh, of the equation here, but for example, in Europe, in Brazil, in China, in South Africa, uh, at least from a consent perspective, um, this is how it works. So basically you have a tracking technology, which could be um, an uh, SDK in an application or JavaScript on your website. And whenever this collects data or personal identifiable information like an IP address, then in order to track this information, you need um, a consent. So long story short, it basically means um, start tracking when consent is there in Europe. And the question is now, 
what does that mean for marketers? And for a long, long time, it looked like uh, this blue thing here. So no consent equals no data, no analytics, no remarketing or retargeting, no conversion tracking. And it was tough to continue doing marketing um, like before 2018, before the GDPR, before CCPA, before um, all of the regulations that are currently coming uh, into place here. But um, what we also see right now is that the time is changing. So there's not consented data um, is more and more uh, having kind of let's call it a revolution. So we see some technologies in the market that make it possible to still um, gather data, either limited or not personalized, but um, without uh, consent. And therefore, it's something that we would like to go today a little bit um, deeper into, which are two fundamental um, areas. One is the user centricity. And the other one is the data centricity. And user centricity means uh, when a company focuses directly on impacting the end user, for example, uh, through the creation of trust, through the simplification of privacy, through creating transparency, easy to understand privacy experience. So examples would be we are contextualizing um, ads here. We are talking about wording, iconization, privacy comics, um, et cetera, which are also topics that we are currently uh, pretty much researching in. And on the other side, we're talking about the data centricity and data centricity is um, where you can still create data, um, but the users are not directly impacted. Uh, so they don't see it. Uh, you don't really um, create a bad user experience. Uh, we are more talking about technologies that limit personal identifiable information or minimize risky data. And the Google consent mode um, is one of the solutions um, that we will see here. And therefore, I would like to hand over uh, now to our presenters. Thank you, Tillman. Um, so as Tillman mentioned, we're really at the precipice of a huge year uh, in, in digital advertising. There's been advances in AI that are unlocking new capabilities and opportunities for marketers, um, just as legacy technologies like third-party cookies and device identifiers are going away. Consumers are also asking for way more transparency and greater control of how their data is being used. I understand the position of the entire industry is challenged. We are being asked to deliver the same, if not better, results in advertising with all of these additional regulatory and technological pressures. So to help you succeed in the new landscape, you need more durable advertising solutions and services that can deliver, continue to go, deliver growth, um, more exciting, creative, and of course, always accurate measurement, um, all while protecting and respecting the user first vision of privacy and transparency. So the key to taking advantage of this opportunity is having high quality consented data and employing durable measurement solution and audience solutions. Used together, these components will not only help make decisions with help you make decisions with confidence, uh, but they're also going to fuel the AI that power long-term performance for your business. Investing in the right strategy now uh, will make it easier to drive growth and sharpen your competitive edge. And then of course, we wanna evaluate the impact of your marketing spend um, by beginning with the accuracy of this consented first-party data. Um, without robust data and measurement in place, you're setting out on a journey without a GPS. Uh, one of our favorite analogies, um, you'll might be moving, you might be moving, but we don't know if you're gonna reach your destination. So the key drivers for change here, um, we can think about these as first being regulatory. So as Tillman's earlier slide alluded to, I think the number now is 70% of the world's population is under some sort of modern privacy regulation. 
And what's really driving this is a modern end user. The user understands um, the way that their data is being used and is asking for more transparency, choice, and of course, control. Finally, the technology changes that I've already mentioned, um, driven by large platforms and innovation in AI. And then, of course, there's more changes on the horizon, especially as it relates to regulations. But again, um, we've got more, more user expectations. Um, and of course, Google Chrome, the big elephant in the room, is deprecating cookies this year. Um, and we'll begin phasing them out starting July with plans to complete the process by the end of the year. Twenty twenty four is that inflection point um, for marketers, and we'll be really making sure that your measurement solutions are in place. Um, measurement and audience solutions are in place um, in order for you to continue on this journey. And with that, I will turn it over to my colleague Jalen. Thank you, Audrey. Thank you, Tillman. Hello, everyone. Um, so. What, what steps do you need to take now that we're in March 2024? Um, first, you need to ensure you are collecting valid user consent for European users. No, please note, this is not a new requirement. Google's existing EU user consent policy hasn't changed since 2018 and reflects these requirements that were previously based off GDPR and e-privacy directive. Next, uh, you have to collect valid user consent, get help from a Google's partnered consent management platform, CMP, uh, to help you with this process and make sure you respect the end user consent choice required by Google's existing EU user consent policy. Second, implement consent mode for audiences. Uh, this is an especially important use case um, as this automatically passes consent signals to Google advertising platform in real time. Third, migrate to Google Analytics 4 to maintain remarketing audiences and conversion export and bidding optimization. Uh, if you would like more information, we have an online blog that you can see and we can distribute to you as well. Number four, upgrade to the latest version of Google Ads, APIs, SDK to pass user consent signals to Google. As a fallback option for customers that do manual uploads of data, they will have to complete a consent attestation within the product UI. Next. We recommend you use a, as previously mentioned, a, a certified consent management platform, CMP, to simplify consent work. Advertisers must obtain and respect the end user consent. As previously mentioned, this is not new. We recommend using one of our partners to effectively get the com and communicate the end user consent choices. These partners can assist you with implementing or upgrading your website, your app's consent banner, support you in navigating consent requirements across different regulations, and can help you pass the consent signal back to Google via consent mode to provide verifiable consent for the use in conversion measurement and audience targeting. Properly gathering and signaling end user choice is critical to ensuring you are respecting user choices and regulatory requirements. That's why Google is bolstering how we enforce our EU user consent policy. Today, Advertisers may adhere to the EU user consent policy to use personalization features. In 2024, or later this year, our enforcement action has been extended to measurement features. To keep your ads measurement working, you must implement consent mode to share consent signals with Google. So what is consent mode? Consent mode helps advertisers properly communicate consent signals to help respect user choice and enable comprehensive measurement and modeling. It allows advertisers to pass robust and auditable opt-in user consent signals to Google. In early November, an upgrade was released to the consent mode API to make it easier to pass consent signals for personalized advertising to Google. This upgrade will be required to preserve online audience functionalities with Google if you operate within the EEA region. Consent mode also provides you a more comprehensive measurement solution by giving you insight into the number of consented and unconsented users. With this information, it can help identify lost conversions from signal loss while, uh, while still preserving conversion modeling. On average, modeling for unconsented users in consent mode recovers 65% of the ad click to conversion journey. So 
what does consent mode look like? I think on the next slide, we have a detail here. As you can see here, um, by default, consent mode of the user consent choice is set to denied. And this is part of the purposeful design and another reason why the user must consent, we must capture that consent uh, via the product. So what else is changing? From March 20, or from this month, 2024, the parameter required for, for personalized ads are add underscore user data and add underscore personalization, controlling both the sharing of data back to Google and the enablement of personalized ads. So what is the difference between advanced consent mode and, tra and traditional consent mode? As you can see here, uh, you gain more modeling features uh, via the advanced consent mode. It adjusts Google tags and SDK behavior to respect users' consented choices. Here in basic consent mode, it unblocks Google tags, SDK, if and when consent is granted. And you can see the flow is slightly different from the advanced uh, flow here. We have a step-by-step -step uh, description on the left um, that we can walk through at a later time and will also be posted in our Help Center articles. And with that, I will pass it back to Tillman. Yeah, thank you so much uh, to the both of you. Very, very insightful. Um, now some, some last points to the audience. So let's quickly uh, discuss the next step. One quite very, very important thing uh, the deadline is an urgent topic, so please implement the Google Consent mode um, in its second version now. And therefore, we have the respective documentations for our user-centric solution, but also for our CookieBot solution updated. We will share the links um, here in the chat and afterwards also via mail. Uh, we already did a webinar for our CookieBot solution and our CookieBot customers. The video was previously recorded and we will share the link here also in the chat, but also via mail. And um, last but not least, for our user-centric solution customers, we will have our webinar uh, for the implementation on the 11th of April. And again, we share the link for the registration here in the chat, but also uh, in the mail afterwards. And with that uh, being sent, thank you very, very much uh, for all of your insights, Audrey. Um, and Jalen, um, yeah, uh, so much to say. And that was it from, from our side. Thank you very, very much for your participation. Um, to the audience out there, stay up to date um, and be ready and be uh, compliant. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.